for the uh, chance to speak on the committee stages of the Immigration Amendment Bill. And I think um, in speaking to part one, it's worth uh, reminding ourselves, because it's been a little while since the second reading, what this bill is about. In fact, well, what gave rise to it? Why we have this bill in the House in the committee stages? What's that? Uh, well, actually it was. There was something that gave rise to it. Actually, if we go back around about a year ago when this bill was first introduced, there were a couple of things that gave rise to this. The National Party was having a little bit of trouble. There was a little bit of trouble going on, a little bit of, of controversy um, around Sky City. Yes, so what happened was this bill suddenly appeared from nowhere, um, out of the blue, after, a year after the Prime Minister had said that, this, uh, that New Zealand's in a very, very good situation in terms of the potential for a mass arrival of um, asylum seekers, that New Zealand's in a very good situation and we could cope quite adequately with that. And there was nothing to worry about, nothing to see, nothing to fear. Um, and here we go, uh, this bill arrived. Um, and if you go back, Mr Chair, to the reason behind this bill, in fact, for the purpose of the bill, um, it was premised on the fact that uh, we would, at some stage in New Zealand, we could expect to see a mass arrival on a boat of 500 people. That is the justification, the, one of the justifications for this bill uh, that was put forward um, as the original reason why we needed to have this bill. Uh, yes, 500 people. For, well, I'm saying that that was the original reason, but that has changed now because actually it's now 30 people camcorder, so it's changed. It's changed during the year that we've uh, actually been looking at it. So now a mass arrival, well actually a mass arrival originally under this bill was 10 people, 10 people turning up on a rusty old boat on our shores was a mass arrival that New Zealand couldn't cope with. For, you know, so that's, what, that's where, what this bill has come down to. So, I am saying that the, it is just about impossible. Yes, I am saying that it is just about impossible. I'm also saying this bill is premised on a completely false assumption. It was based on a Canadian ship that came from uh, Sri Lanka, arrived on the Canadian, Canadian shores, chartered by the Tamils, but by a big population in, in Canada, a steel-hulled ship uh, that sent, for some reason, sent our government into a panic and believing that a sh similar ship could arrive in New Zealand. Now, two things about that, Mr Chair. First of all, a steel-hulled ship carrying 500 people could never be funded by any population in New Zealand because we don't have the sizeable Tamil population or any other in New Zealand. And second of all, second of all, there has never been an instance of any ship arriving in this way uh, over the, since we've had the issue of refugees and since, uh, going right back to the 1970s in fact, when boat people, there was all the scare around boat people. So that was the first premise. It was premised on the fact that there would be 500 people involved in a mass arrival. This is in the regula regulatory impact statement. They'd all be from the same country. They'd all claim asylum and uh, they would also have to, uh, there were 62% of these claims would be declined following assessment. So big scare around 500 people. Um, and as we got further into this bill, of course, we found out that actually what the government was talking about was 10 people. 10 people turning up on a boat is a mass arrival that our country could not cope with. Now, honestly, that is, is so, so pathetic. The second thing um, that this bill uh, was premised on was it was supposed to be to deter people smugglers. Now, I find this very interesting because, of course, we, none of us support people smugglers. None of us, we all know that is something that is uh, at the heart of some of the problems we're seeing um, in Australia, which has given rise to the appalling detention centres that they have. Uh, in fact, the system that we're trying to copy with this bill. But as people smugglers, you know, they are crooks, they are the people that prey on the vulnerable, people that are, 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 are 
looking for a better life, that are struggling, that have families and children that they're trying to get out of camps and so on. They, Mr Chair, Mr Sorry Chair. Infinity. And so they are evil. So we support stopping uh, people smugglers. But what did we find in the last couple of weeks? We've actually let a people smuggler into New Zealand. We have granted that person refugee status. This, well, no, there's that one, but this is, there's another one. We've granted someone who was responsible for being involved in people smuggling, who the Australians are seeking. They want him extradited. Uh, he they, uh, was responsible for being, being involved in people smuggling where um, hundreds of family members, um, parents and children were drowned when the boat sunk. Now, that person is living in New Zealand as a refugee, was granted refugee status. So if we're so worried about people sm smuggling, surely the first thing we should be concentrating on, rather than this rubbishy bill, is making sure that we protect our own refugee system from people like that who are involved in people smuggling. We all know that punishing the victims of people smugglers, and they are the people that arrive um, in a rusty boat who often are in awful situations. They often end up drowning um, and all end up in horrible camps somewhere. We all know that they are the victims of people smugglers. What this bill does is it punishes the victims of people smugglers. It does nothing, nothing to deter people smugglers. All of the evidence that the Select Committee heard from, um, I think, 33 submitters, only one of whom actually supported this bill, but 33 submitters who are very, very involved in this organisation, sorry, in this issue, uh, like the UNHCR, refugee organisations who've got years of experience. All of their advice was uh, research shows that this kind of legislation, locking up the victims, locking them up for six months or up to six months or more in mandatory detention without the rights of ordinary people, without the rights of other asylum seekers who come by plane, does not deter people smugglers. So the premise that this would be 500 people on a boat and the premise that this would deter people smugglers are false. Are false. So uh, the underlying question that I have to the Minister and the Chair about Part 1, Mr Chair, is what is really behind this bill? What is really behind this bill? Well, I think we know. I think we know. I think that the, uh, the, minister, the minister of Immigration and John Key have got themselves in the big boys club, you know, along with Canada, the UK, Australia and, and so on. Um, and they, they've got themselves, they've gone off to the, you know, the, the five country uh, conferences and they've been persuaded that we should join with them in their immigration policies, which are wrong, which are wrong. They've been persuaded, in fact, we know John Key was persuaded by Julia Gillard from Australia that we should take 150 of Australian refugees. Now, Julia Gillard is a smart woman. She got a great deal. She got a great deal out of that. Yes, and she's a very smart woman, and that's why she's the Prime Minister of Australia. She got a great deal out of that. What did we get? We got nothing. John Key got done. And John Key has not been able to justify that deal. He has not been able to justify that deal in any way, shape or form. He's hiding, hiding behind uh, national security. Nobody knew anything about it. It popped up. Uh, he got done by Julia Gillard down at uh, Queenstown. She, you know, she got a great deal. We got a terrible deal. And here we are now with a stupid bill, with a bill that does nothing except uh, actually damage our international reputation, which I treasure, which we treasure, as a, a country that has got a great human rights uh, record when it comes to refugees and accepting refugees. It does damage. It's not necessary. This is not necessary. It's a stupid 
uh, purpose to this bill. Uh, the purpose has been shown to be completely based on a false premise. We're just uh, uh, debating a bill. I don't even know why we are wasting the House's time on something like this when 10 people could be locked up for six months, which is supposed to be such a critical, critical issue for New Zealand. Uh, 10 people might arrive on a boat one day, possibly, maybe, could, could perhaps happen, and we want to lock them up in mandatory detention. David Bennett. Mr Chair, um, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, members of the committee that are here today. and. Um